everyone, welcome back. My name is Sarah and I want to say thank you for joining me for class number six of our online photo classes. Looks like you guys had a lot of fun last week with your scavenger hunt. You really got to get out there and have some fun practicing what we've learned so far uh, in all the lessons previously. So if you missed out on the scavenger hunt slideshow, I will link it below so that you can take a look at all the different photos that everybody has been taking all over the place. Big thank you to everyone who submitted their images. Um, it was a lot of fun seeing how you guys all interpreted the various different items that were on your list of the scavenger hunt. So big thank you to everyone for sending in your photos. You always know how to make me smile. Okay. So today in lesson six, we're going to be talking about using framing in our photos and how we can use framing to make our photos look that much better. Now, what is framing? Well, we can kind of think about it like we would in the way of a frame that we have around a picture. So here I have a picture of my dog when I was a kid. Her name was Paddington. Um, and I put her picture in a photo frame. Now, what the frame does is it creates a border around our picture and it helps the viewer to show exactly what it is where we want them to look. So we use it to outline the subject that we're taking a photo of. Now, this year I've taken a picture and put it into a frame, but we can also find framing outside, inside, um, there's things called natural framing, like if you're in a forest and maybe you've got tree branches that form a nice frame around something. Um, there's also frames in our house, like uh, our windows and our doors. So we can use these frames that we see that occur and we can use them to frame our subject of what we want to take a photo of. Okay, so how do we actually go about doing this? And what do frames look like? And how can we use them to frame our things that we want to take pictures of? Well, why don't we take a look at a few examples to get a better idea? Okay, so here's an example of a frame that you might find in your house. Uh, it's not a square frame, but it's a circular frame. So here I've got some slices of oranges that are on a round plate. So I've used the round plate as my frame to highlight the oranges. Here's another example of a frame you might find. Um, I've got a cutout in my house and I wanted to take a picture of all of my different coffee makers. So what I did was I placed them all within the cutout and used the cutout as a frame. Another example of a circular frame, here I've got a woven basket with some eggs in it. So the idea with the frames is that what we want to do is draw the eyes of the people that are looking at our photos to the subjects. So in this case, it's the eggs and I'm telling them I want them to look at the eggs. Here's another kind of little funny one. Um, I have these little stuffy critters and I decided I wanted to showcase my little dragon. Um, so here's a frame that's not necessarily a circle or a square, but it's got an outline around the dr little dragon stuffy. So framing can also occur outside and it may not be exactly obvious right away. But here I have a tree on either side of the bench. Um, so I'm creating a frame using the trees that are on either side. Archways are another great example of a frame. So what I've done here is used the frame on the bridge to look out onto the hills on the other side. So I'm really telling the viewer where I want them to look. You can also have a tower maybe that has an archway uh, cutout in it. So what I'm doing is I'm using the frames that are already there to highlight my subject. In this case, it's the little red car driving through the tunnel. I'm using that frame to showcase what I want the viewer to look at. 
You can have um, archways again that create a frame around, in this case, it's the building and the trees in the background. So it kind of works the same way that leading lines does. Uh, a frame will guide your viewer on where to look. In this case, we have sort of three frames. We've got the three different archways that are gradually leading our viewers to look at what's in the background. Another example of an archway or a, a curved frame looking up towards the building in the back. So what I've done is I've decided that I want to shoot through this frame that's already there. Now your frame can exist behind your subject. So in this case, we have the two trees behind the fountain acting as the frame. In this case, the trees are in front of the church behind them. So we're putting the trees around to act as that frame within our camera so that we can frame the subject. Now, I wanted to show you ways in which you can see um, the different frames that exist out there. So here I have a, a fence that is going along in front of a fountain. And I really like the, uh, the statue that's on the top of the fountain. But if I take it from too far away, it gets kind of busy. There's a lot going on here. So we see a lot of the fence. But if I get closer, so again, I change my point of view and I just use the two spikes at the top of the fence, then I can frame the top of the statue. So as we've practiced before, changing your point of view before we were looking at moving maybe up or down or left or right, this changing your point of view involves getting closer to the subject. So we move closer to the part of the frame that we want to use. Okay, so your assignment for this week is, can anybody guess? Yeah, it's going to be framing. We're gonna look for frames that we can use to frame the, the subject that we want to take a picture of. Now, we can use things that occur maybe in our homes or in buildings, such as windows or doorways, door frames. We can also go outside and explore, and maybe we've got an archway in a garden or a pathway that's covered by trees that frames our subject. Now, you can also get creative and create or make your own type of frame. I want you guys to have fun with it and explore and keep an eye out for those frames of, and, and use them around the things you want to take photos of. Now, one thing or one tip to look out for um, once you've found a frame to frame your subject is paying attention to your viewpoint. Now we've practiced this a lot in some of the previous lessons and it is still a good idea when we're looking at using framing. So I want you to explore, once you've found a frame, how changing your viewpoint can change the way the frame uh, works to um, highlight the subject that you want to photograph. So don't be afraid to get up high and look down through the frame or get down low uh, and look up through the frame. Maybe move to your left or to your right. But remember that you can still use your point of view to change up the way that the picture looks. How does that sound? So I've linked the assignment down below so you can download it and go out and look for frames whether inside or outside, naturally occurring or man-made frames, or even maybe one of your own creations of a frame. Have some fun, uh, get out and explore. Once you've had a chance and you've finished taking all of your pictures, uh, what I want you to do is go through them and pick five of your favorite photos. And if you're participating, you can submit them to the weekly slideshow uh, and you can email them to me. So, you'll have a week to look for frames every which way you look. Um, it might be trickier 
uh, in some locations than others. Sometimes you might have to look for it. Sometimes it might appear right away. So as I've said before, if you can't find a frame right away, don't get discouraged. Don't be afraid to maybe take a break and then come back and try it again later. So I hope you guys have a lot of fun with framing, uh, framing all the fun things that you can take photos of, and I will look forward to seeing the photos that you submit. And I will see you guys again next week. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, have a great week taking all kinds of new types of photos, and we'll see you again soon. Bye guys, thanks again.